Well, hey everyone, Wayne Fox here, back with another doc review. This is the Sonatec, and I have to read this, Echo 13 Thunderbolt 5 SSD dock. And now note that this is the only dock I know that allows you to insert and use a SSD for your storage. And for some people that might be a terrific option because to buy a Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure, it's well over $200 and it might be more affordable to buy it combined with your dock. Personally, I won't be using one like this and that's why I've actually borrowed it because I have portable SSDs that I prefer to use. But if you're thinking of a Thunderbolt 5 dock and you wanna add some storage to it, this might be a great option. I managed to borrow this one, so let's get this box open, see what comes with it and then get it hooked up and give it a workout like I have all of my other docks over the years. Okay, well, let's just see what's in the box. Uh, pretty streamlined, I like the shape. We'll open it up in just a second, see what else is in the box. Quick start guide. We do have a certified Thunderbolt 5 cable, it looks like, yep. We have the power supply. I'll have to look up and see what this is. It looks like it's probably 240 watts, it might be a little more, and the power cord. So pretty much like all the docks, let's take a look at the dock itself. Interesting, it's a, uh, it's a pretty attractive. Um, this top is plastic and I'm not sure how this works if this is like open underneath and so this is uh, leaves space for heat. But it's, uh, the whole thing actually feels like plastic. Not that that's a problem. I mean, it's not that you can't make uh, good things out of plastic. Uh, here on the front, we have a power button. This is the upstream port to our computer. I've said many times those belong on the back. I'm not sure why anybody still puts them on the front. Uh, you don't unplug it from the dock. You don't need access to that. You unplug it from your computer. We do have a downstream Thunderbolt port on the front, which is nice. And I do like the fact that they put that on there. We have a USB port here. Let me just put my glasses on and see if I can read the specs. It's kind of small. And it looks like it's a 10 gigabit per second dock. It doesn't say the power delivery, so I'm guessing it's, I'm gonna guess it's 7.5. Uh, we'll see. It has a micro SD or TF card and an SD card and a combined audio in, audio out. Uh, look at the back real quick. We have what looks like a five gigabit per second Two more 10 gigabit per second. We'll have to look at those specs. I'm pretty sure that I saw these are all 7.5. Well, I think one of them had more than that. We have a 2.5 gig ethernet connector. And then we have two more downstream Thunderbolt ports. Like I said, the only mistake they made, I think, is that the upstream port should have been back here. You do not need um, access to the computer into the dock. You plug the cord from the dock into the computer. Several of them do that. I'm not gonna say too much about it. It doesn't mean anything. So it looks pretty good. Well, I've been using this uh, pretty heavily for the last few days. I've disconnected it because I need to get it back to who I borrowed it from. But in the meantime, I thought I would mention a few things. First of all, in the beginning, I talked about putting in an SSD. And unfortunately, the SSD doesn't appear to be user serviceable. You have to pick a model with the size of SSD you want. And so uh, that makes it, to me, it would be nice if you could actually put your own in there or change it out. You might be able to open it up. I assume there's some screws under these rubber feet and you can maybe open it up and change it out. I'm certainly not gonna do that since this doesn't belong to me. And I did contact Sonatech to see if that is possible. And if so, does it void the warranty? And I'll put some information uh, in the text right below me when I find that out. But. The reason this is an interesting dock is, even though it's the most expensive dock I've reviewed, from a value proposition, it's actually a really, really good value if you need SSD storage. 
Right now I'm using an external SSD. This is a little Acasis enclosure. I've done videos on these. I think this is the best current Thunderbolt 5 enclosure out there for quite a few reasons. And the enclosure costs around $230. Now the cheapest SSD enclosure that I found so far that I've tested is around $200. And of course, if you add the cost of an enclosure and the value of an SSD, if you bought it, these are current Amazon prices, you'll see that you're only paying between $151 and $272 for the dock portion, which makes it the cheapest Thunderbolt 5 dock by quite a ways, if, especially if you buy the, the smaller version, as long as you need that external storage anyway. As far as the dock itself, we'll get more into that in a minute, but it's a it features compare quite favorably with most of the other docks out there. They're all kind of in the same general category. They give you three downstream Thunderbolt ports. They give you a few USB ports. Some are a little better than others. And this one is good in the fact that you have three uh, 10 gigabit per second USB ports and one 5 gigabit per second port. They're all only type A ports, but it's pretty easy to adapt a type A to a type C if you need that. It gives the same internet speed. Now, here's my chart that compares them all. And you'll see this falls right in line. But if you look at the price for the dock portion only, you're down between $150 and $270. So first, let's see how well the SSD performs. I have the Sonatec with the 2 terabyte Kingston SSD. I have my Cases TB501 Pro, and it has a Western Digital 4 terabyte 850X. Unfortunately, I don't have a Kingston SSD, so I can do a true perfect head-to-head -head comparison. But let's just see how they do. First, we're going to connect both of these directly to my Mac and see what kind of results we get. And as you can see, the external SSD performs a little better in the write and quite a bit better, about 20% better in the read. Now, that being said, 5,400 write, 4,800 read, 4,900 read, that's still really, really fast. I mean, that is way faster than anything we used to get with Thunderbolt 4 devices. And so that's not really a negative. That's still performing pretty well. Now let's compare it once I put the Acasis through a dock. We'll plug it into the Sonatec. And here you'll see that suddenly the internal SSD is outperforming as far as write speed quite a bit. And that's because these docks all seem to throttle the write speed. Every dock I've tested so far throttles the write speed of an external SSD enclosure to about 4,400 megabytes a second. And apparently because of the way the Sonatec is designed and that is built in, that's really not applying. So now let's see what happens when we start attaching displays. Here you can see that if we attach one 4K display to the dock that neither the external uh, Acasis or the internal Kingston really sees a, a real problem with the write speed. Here we add a second 4K display at 60 Hertz and you'll see that the external one didn't, didn't affect the external Acasis uh, Western Digital Black very much, but it does affect the internal one, but we're still faster. Now, if I change one of those to 144 Hertz, you'll see that they both take a hit and now they're both about the same. Once we push that bandwidth to those displays, you're gonna get about the same performance. Now it's easy to get all wrapped up in super, super fast in a thousand megabytes a second more, but the bottom line is all of this is fast. None of this is gonna affect hardly anybody. The only people that might be affected are ones that do massive file transfers. And that's probably gonna have more to do with the Kingston SSD than anything. What I wanna do now is let's just see how much data we can shove onto that SSD before we hit the limit of its cache. It's using a standard SLC cache, which almost all of these Gen 4 SSDs use. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy a 200 gigabyte disk image file. So as far as the finder is concerned, this is one file. We're not gonna lose any speed because of overhead. And we're gonna copy that file over and over and over again until we finally see us hit that cache. Let's just speed this up real quick so we can see how it's going. Notice I also have the temperature of that Kingston and you'll see that we have no issues with heat. One of the reasons is the Sonatec actually does have a fan in it to keep that SSD cool. All right, let's slide ahead forward. This is 200 gigabytes. Let's speed it up a little more. We're gonna copy it a second time. And now when we copy the third time, and once we hit about 500 gigabytes of total data transfer, suddenly we've hit the limit of that SLC cache. And this is where the Kingston is a little weak. It's dramatically slow at that point. 
Once the SLC cache fills up, it drops down to a native speed of around two to 300 megabytes a second from its 5,400 that we were getting before. Most of these SSDs will drop to about 1,300 to 1,400. That's a, what the Western Digital does. The good news is it's a really large cache and you really won't be an issue unless you get this thing really full. Almost all these Gen 4 SSDs, if you keep them really, really full, you're gonna have challenges with performance if you're doing any significant size file transfers. So overall, it's not a bad choice. It's a pretty good SSD because the basic speed is good and that SLC cache is large. And once we start copying, that SLC cache will eventually write itself out to the rest of the SSD and we'll get that space back so that our speed comes back. So as far as the dock itself, it's very comparable. Here's my chart that I've trying to kept update. You can kind of compare the features of these docks. These are kind of the ones that I feel they all are pretty much giving you the same basic features and the same basic support. Well, there's a reason for that. They're all Thunderbolt 5 certified. And so most of the features they provide, they are provided there because they are providing what is built into Thunderbolt. So it's more about what you like, what you need, uh, in this case, because of that one feature, that SSD, the value proposition, if you're going to buy and build your own SSD separately or buy something already built separately, the value proposition makes this probably the best bargain out there. If you don't need that storage, then perhaps it's maybe not the best choice. And there are other docs. In fact, Sonatech might even make one. I haven't checked yet, but they might even make one that doesn't have the SSD. So you kind of have to decide what you want, what you need. And the bottom line is this dock, if you do want that SSD, gives you a great price because you're really going to get the underlying dock for a significant value. Well, I hope that was helpful. I'm kind of doing a video right now that just talks about whether you even need Thunderbolt 5. And I've also had some questions about which cables you can use. A lot of questions about Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 3 cable compatibility. So I'll probably do a short video on that because it's surprising how many of the older cables work pretty well, depending on what you're hooking them up to. So anyway, until I get those out, see ya.